Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Friday, November the 13th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 26. When it was evening, Jesus reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, The one who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup when he had given thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Our first devotion with Luther tonight is based on James chapter 2, verse 5. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, didn't God choose poor people in the world to become rich in faith and to receive the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? Spiritual poverty. You may wonder, what, do all Christians have to live in complete poverty and not own anything? Do we have to get rid of all of our honor, prestige, and power? What are prosperous people such as business owners and government officials supposed to do? Should they sell all their possessions and give up their authority in order to buy heaven from the poor? The answer is no. Scripture doesn't say that you can buy heaven from the poor, but it does say that you should be counted among the poor and also be spiritually poor. Jesus said, Blessed are those who recognize that they are spiritually helpless, Matthew 5, 3. The little word spiritually shows that self-imposed poverty won't bring God's blessing. It's not intrinsically evil to have money, own possessions and land, or employ workers. These are all gifts from God in the way God has ordered our society. No one is blessed simply because he is a beggar and owns nothing. Jesus was talking about being spiritually poor or spiritually helpless. The world can't keep on going without money, respect for authority, land ownership, and servants. 
A lord or prince can't be poor and fulfill his responsibilities in life. In order to carry out his official duties, he must have the necessary resources. So the idea that we must live in poverty is incorrect. The world couldn't keep going if we were all beggars and owned nothing. We couldn't support our families and servants if we didn't have any money. To sum up, being financially poor isn't the answer. So be satisfied with whatever God gives you, whether it's poverty or prosperity. But be sure of this, each and every one of us must become spiritually poor in the sight of God. Join together in the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And again, as always on Fridays, our Friday prayer focuses on the passion of Christ. And uh, just it's worth mentioning again, too, these, these long prayers we have for each day of the week. They're more for us to remember what God has done for us than God needing to hear what he did for us. He knows what he did. So going through, for example, the passion of Christ in this prayer makes us think about those things uh, and then makes the little bit of part of it that's actually a prayer to God be more focused uh, based on what we have been thinking about as we hear these words. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, we thank you that you have redeemed us poor and condemned creatures, not by any of our works, merit, or worthiness, but by your holy suffering, death, and shedding of blood. O Lord, your suffering was great, your torment was heavy. We cannot comprehend how many your stripes, how deep your wounds, or the bitterness and painfulness of your death. How inexpressible is your love that reconciled us to your heavenly Father. In great fear of death, you sweat blood on the Mount of Olives, drops of blood that fell upon the earth, and there, abandoned by all your disciples. You willingly gave yourself into the hands of those who led you mercilessly, bound hard and cruel, from one unjust judge to another. You were falsely accused and condemned, spit upon, scoffed at, and struck in the face with fists. For the sake of our misdeeds, you were hit, whipped, crowned with thorns, and treated wretchedly, like a worm and not a man. You were despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, so that even a heathen heart took pity and said, Behold the man. For the sake of our sin, you were counted a sinner, and hung up between two evildoers as a curse. You were pierced in hands and feet with nails, and in your highest thirst you were given vinegar and gall to drink. Finally, in great pain, you gave up your spirit so that you could pay our debt, and we could be healed by your wounds. O Lord Jesus Christ, for this and all your other suffering and pain we give you thanks and praise. We pray you, let your holy bitter suffering and death not be lost on us, but grant that at all times this may be our comfort, and that we may boast in it. And that as we ponder it, all evil desire in us may be snuffed out and subdued, and all virtue may be implanted and increased, so that we, having died to sin, may live in righteousness, following the example you have left us, walking in your footsteps, enduring evil with patience, and suffering injustice with a good conscience. Amen. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our shorter devotion with Luther tonight is from 2 Corinthians chapter, that's yesterday's. It is from Galatians chapter 1, verse 8. 
Even if we or an angel from heaven could preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Boast in the gospel. I thank God that I cannot boast of my great knowledge, of my holiness, or of my life. For my life has been such that I dare not glory, and I have been a blasphemer. This is my boast, and please God let it strike emperor, pope, bishops, universities, doctors, or all the angels, that I am proud and stubborn in glorifying the gospel. This I will not surrender. As St. Paul also says in Galatians 1.8, Let anyone who preaches another gospel than that which I have preached be, preached be accursed. This sounds haughty enough. He inflexibly defies all angels and men in heaven and on earth. This is the arrogance I must have, and no one shall keep me from it. It would be good if I could be unyielding and proud enough in this matter, for here I do not rest on myself, but on one who is called Christ, in whose name I am baptized. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I've done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.